Hey everybody and welcome back to uh, the channel. Um, today I'm going to cover uh, timing on uh, the M54. So since I rebuilt this engine, um, when I fired it up, there were it, th it kept throwing a few codes, um, which was putting it into limp mode. It's obviously pretty useless. So um, what I'm going to do today is try and solve that and basically going to retime the engine uh, with it in situ and see if it gets rid of the codes. Hopefully it will. Um, so I've invested in the proper timing kit, which you can see down here. Um, initially, when I did it the first time, it was kind of guesswork. Um, I knew roughly what to do, um, and it did fire up and obviously ran, uh, which is good for testing out the compression and the integrity of the engine. Um, <clears throat> but clearly something's not right, because obviously, it's, it still throws these three codes. So basically it's, it's telling me that the intake and exhaust cams, the reference code, I think is 2E972E98. Um, and it also obviously disables the auto boost control uh, when it's in limp mode. Um, so yeah, I'm going to get cracking on this and uh, I'll try and step you through it as I do it. So I've started by taking the engine cover off. Um, basically all of this stuff has to come off. Um, so I'm just gonna start unhooking everything, starting with obviously the injectors, um, coils. Now I know I've got a couple of stubborn ones up here, so I'm just gonna pay a bit of attention to those. Uh, once you've taken all of those out, you can release the these that are holding the injectors in. Obviously release as much pressure out of the fuel rail as you can. And then there's a few bolts here holding the fuel rail on, that can come off. And then you should be able to access all the bolts for the rocker cover. So I'm just gonna get cracking on with that. So I'm just about to release the pressure from the fuel rail, disconnected the battery obviously. Um, for the injector side, you need a 14 mil. And for the rail, rail one here, you'll need a 17. So let's just crack that. bit of shop towel underneath it just to soak up anything but the engine's been off for well since yesterday anyway so not a lot which is good just release that and then undo all the rest okay so all the uh, plugs and injectors are out um i've left the spark plugs in for now because to be honest with the injectors out you can turn the engine over enough um so yeah everything's out the way that needs to be so now I'm just going to get undo all of these E10s and then we can get the cover off. Okay, so rocker cover's now off. Um, let me see if it looks okay in there. Um, so what we've got to do now is turn it round to TDC. Uh, so I've got my bar on down here. Um, and then hopefully I can put my locking pin, engine locking pin, this. Uh, there's a little hole down here under, oh well, down under there. Uh, there's a little cover, you pull that out and you slide this in and it locks in with the, the flywheel, obviously, well flywheel on the manual car or um, flex plate on an auto, which is what this is. Um, once it's there, then we can see, or I'll show you if these are significantly out of time. Um, because what should happen is you should have a little QR code stamped on the top of the cams and they should both be pointing up and they should be able to slot in the blue one of these um, to tell us if we're in or out of time and obviously these forks here which obviously would lock down into there as well um, so I'll show you that once it's at TDC um, but yeah so the pin is in um, and then if I just come up here, you can see these QR codes. Now, those cams look slightly off to me. They should be pointing dead straight up. They're not on both sides. Ooh. So that hopefully is my problem. And so what I'm gonna do now is put that light down. Um, I need to slacken these off. That'll allow me to move the cams independently. Um, I need to take the tensioner out 
or rather slacken it off, align the cams and do it all back up again. So let's go do that. Okay, so I've made the necessary adjustments to the cams. They're now obviously pointing up top and you've got the, uh, the Vanos ring tool is uh, bolted down in place. So that just bolts into these little rings here with two little dowel pins to make sure they're in the right place. And um, so the next thing is you have to put the chain under some preload. So basically this little tool here that comes as part of the, uh, the kit. Um, so basically I've got to put that back in where the um, tensioner goes and then slowly twist this in until the chain becomes tight. Once I've done that, you can then do these up and that'll lock those in position. You then take that out rotate the engine a couple of times, um, obviously taking the flywheel pin out, and then you put all this back on to check that they're still in the same position. So fingers crossed, they are. So the chain is now tight. I've got the tensioner, pre-tensioner tool in. So the next step is to tighten these up. Um, typical BMW, they've got a weird ways of doing things. So it's 20 Newton meters and then 180 degrees. Um, so let's get that done. Okay, so I've done two rotations of the crank. So that's one full rotation of each cam and basically refitted the tools, uh, the locking pins down there in the, uh, in the flywheel. So fingers crossed, we're now all timed up. Everything's slotted in nicely. Um, so all, the left, all that's left to do is take out the pre-tensioning special tool and put in the actual tensioner and then reassemble. So that's next. Okay, so I think we're all back together now. Um, everything's hooked up, all the sensors reattached, everything's torqued down, uh, all the extra wiring is sorted. So, moment of truth, let's try and fire it up. Balance the phone there. No error code so far. I think I can say that was successful. Um, hopefully this video has been of use. Uh, if it has, feel free to like and subscribe. Um, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.